నమస్తే త్రీ ఐ అట్లాస్ ప్రపంచం అంతా మారు మోగిపోతున్న ఈ పేరు చాలా 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 సెన్సేషన్ క్రియేట్ చేసింది వస్తున్నది ఒక ఆస్ట్రాయిడా లేకపోతే ఏలియన్ షిప్పా అన్న కన్ఫ్యూజన్లో అందరూ ఉన్నారు సో దీనికి సంబంధించి ప్రపంచం అంతా ఒకవైపు అయితే ఒక్క మనిషి మాత్రం ఇంకో వైపు అతనే హార్వర్డ్ యూనివర్సిటీకి సంబంధించిన ప్రొఫెసర్ అవిలోబ్ అవిలోబ్ గారు ప్రస్తుతం మనం ఎక్స్క్లూజివ్గా మనకి యుఎస్ నుంచి హార్వర్డ్ నుంచి లైన్లో ఉన్నారు ఆయన్ని అడిగి మనం కొన్ని మరిన్ని విషయాలు తెలుసుకుందాం హలో లోబ్ హౌ యూ డూయింగ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ హ్యావింగ్ మీ ఇట్స్ అ గ్రేట్ ప్లేజర్ థ్యాంక్స్ అలాట్ ఫర్ జాయినింగ్ అస్ ఇన్ అవర్ కాన్వర్జేషన్ లోబ్ ఇట్స్ బీన్ వెరీ సెన్సేషన్ అబౌట్ దిస్ నేమ్ యువర్ నేమ్ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ త్రీ ఏ అట్లాస్ ఐ కెన్ సే దట్ మోర్ దెన్ త్రీ ఏ అట్లాస్ యువర్ నేమ్ ఈస్ సెన్సేషనల్ ఇన్ దీస్ డేస్ హౌ డూ యూ ఫీల్ ఇట్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ well it's not about me it's about the possibility that uh, there might be a visitor from interstellar space uh, that uh, was sent by some intelligence and that's what we should discuss so i am telling you this is not my fault but the overall asteroid is going to talk about it they are going to talk about it lob you have been heavily criticized by many in the astrophysics community for suggesting that uh, omuya might be an alien probe some say it's a speculation without evidence and risks damaging scientific credibility so how do you respond to those who call uh, your theories science fiction mass guiding as science well i'm responding to anomalies in the data in other words things that do not line up with what we expect for rocks or icy rocks asteroids or comets in the case of oumuamua it was uh, the flat shape that it had uh, based on the variation of reflected sunlight uh and uh, moreover uh the fact that it was pushed away from the sun without any uh, evidence for gas or dust around it uh, so uh, the standard uh, cometary interpretation was not applicable and the question was what is pushing it and why does it have this unusual shape uh and uh, in the case of 3i atlas the latest object uh it appears that the object is very big uh, comparable to the size of a big city uh and uh, that is a million times more massive object than uh, was the case for oumuamua and the question is why haven't we seen many more smaller objects than this one and moreover it's uh, going in the plane of the planets around the sun and the chance of that happening at random is 1 in 500 and there are other anomalies so my point is that we should um be intrigued by anomalies and be curious Uh, rather than assume that we know the answer in advance because that's the way science is done uh, by attending to evidence and anyone that does not want to discuss anomalies is anti scientific lob uh, i would ask you this uh, this is the third object uh, which is an intraterrestrial object in the universe which we found right now so do you feel or do you think there are more objects like this definitely uh, the The surprising fact about 3i Atlas is that it's very big, it's very massive, uh, more than 33 billion tons, and there is just not enough uh, rocky material in interstellar space to deliver such a massive object once per decade. Uh, and uh, moreover, you know, it had the unusual composition. We found nickel with very little iron, and the only other place uh, where we see that is in industrially produced nickel alloys that we use for aerospace applications. But uh, very recently, just yesterday, uh, the object started to show non-gravitational acceleration when it came closest to the sun. Uh, it's on the opposite side of the sun. We can't observe it from Earth, but we use the solar uh, observatories to look at it and it looks like it's bluer than the sun that's another unusual fact about it and uh, i'm just saying that it has a lot of anomalies that indicate that it's not a comet of a type that we are familiar with and therefore we should collect as much data as possible we should be curious rather than insist that it must be a natural comet because the implications are huge and uh, we under these circumstances we cannot just uh, adopt the most likely explanation uh, which is that it's natural we have to consider the possibility that it might not be a comet uh, just the way that intelligence agencies consider black swan events events that are small likelihood but have huge implications for society lob in a common point of view common man point of view how much he should fear about this uh, uh the so called object uh, 3 atlas in your words in a brief sentence 
I don't think we should worry about it at this time uh, because so far it didn't show any uh, technological signature that is definitely technological. For example, it didn't maneuver in a very drastic way. We don't have evidence that it released probes that can arrive to Earth, uh, but we should monitor it. Uh, and we should check if there, are, there is any unusual activity near Earth after uh, it passes uh, close to the sun, which was this week. Um, and um, uh, it's just uh, something to consider, uh, given the, the potential uh, risk. Uh, and in the coming decade, there will be new interstellar objects discovered every few months by the Rubin Observatory in Chile. So we are now living in a new time. Uh, where we have, have the ability to check how much traffic uh, of technological objects from outside the solar system we might have. We ourselves, humanity, launched five probes out of the solar system. So it, it's definitely reasonable to imagine that given the 100 billion stars like the sun in the Milky Way galaxy, and the fact that most of them are older than the sun by billions of years, that there was... Uh, another technological civilization, or more than one, uh, capable of uh, sending gadgets that arrive at our backyard. Okay. To you, as well as NASA, there are differential statements are there. So, I would ask you, what is the exactly uh, the difference between your, you and NASA statements going on particular issue? Right. So, NASA is concerned about uh, not creating any panic, any alarm in the public, uh, and they follow the... Uh, approach of many scientists which are saying we should adopt the most likely interpretation of this object which is that it is a natural comet. This is very often the way that science operates. You have um, uh, possibilities and you adapt the most likely explanation. Uh, it applies for example to uh, uh, galaxies far away from the Milky Way galaxy are on, and uh, obviously it makes sense when there is no implication to society, you know, whether we are right or wrong. But in situations where there could be uh, implications to society, and that is well, uh, very familiar in the context of intelligence, military, and so forth, you have to consider seriously events that have a small likelihood, but have a huge impact, uh, because when you multiply a small likelihood by a big impact, the outcome it could be devastating and you can't afford allowing for a, an event like that to happen without you being aware of that, without preparing for that. And scientists are not used to that. NASA is following the pattern of scientists and basically is trying to say the most likely explanation is a natural comet. But I'm saying that if you have a situation where there is a a black swan event with a, a, a big impact on society, we must consider that possibility in, in, and plan accordingly, have some contingency plan. And uh, this is the kind of situation where science and politics come together. Uh, and, and it's unusual, but we have to consider that. And in my view, we have to have an international organization that uh, in the future, and including in, in the context of this subject, uh, coordinates as much uh, observing programs as possible, uh, a campaign of, of observations. I wrote a, a white paper to the United Nations encouraging them. And indeed, the, a week ago, uh, an organization supported by the United Nations, the International Asteroid Warning Network, uh, announced a campaign that will start on uh, November 27th and continue for two months uh, of observing 3 I Atlas and getting as much data as possible. And that is really what I want, because once you have enough data, it should become clear within a couple of months from now whether it is a natural comet or technological. And uh, as of now, we know that there was this uh, non-gravitational acceleration that it exhibited uh, as of two days ago um, when it came close to the sun. And uh, that suggests that it, the object, if it's a natural comet, should have lost at least 10 to 20% of its mass in order to get this uh, recoil that it showed. And uh, that means that once it comes out of uh, uh, hiding behind the sun, we should see clear signature of a very massive cloud of uh, of gas around it that weighs of order 3 billion tons or, uh, or so. 
uh, and it it would be impossible to uh, miss that. So if we don't see a very massive cloud of gas around it uh, in the coming months, then it means that this non-gravitational acceleration was provided by something else, perhaps some propulsion system. And that's what we should check for. I'm all in favor of collecting as much data as possible to guide us, rather than assuming that we know the answer in advance. Also, Loeb, you have said that uh, US government may hold some classified data about this unidentified aerial phenomena. Do you believe there is an evidence of extraterrestrial technology being deliberately hidden? I'm leading the Galileo project that built three observatories that are scanning the entire sky uh, at all times in the infrared, visible light, radio and audio. And we are getting data on millions of objects every year and we are analyzing uh, it uh, with machine learning software. So I, I'm definitely intrigued by the reports uh, of military personnel and the intelligence agencies in the US that they are not uh, identifying, they are unable to tell the nature of some of the objects uh, in the sky and, and some of the objects uh, perform in ways that are outside the envelope of known familiar technological objects that are human made. So my approach to this is to collect uh, scientific quality data with our observatory so we can tell uh, whether it's real or not, uh, as to whether the U.S. government has information, materials uh, that um, indicate uh, extraterrestrial origin. Uh, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Lob, your ideas get a lot of media attention, sometimes more than your data. How do you respond to claims that you use controversy to stay in the spotlight? Well, I'm just uh, describing what I know, and uh, I'm allowing myself to ask questions that, you know, any scientist must ask, which is when you see anomalies in the data, we should wonder what they mean. That's all I'm doing, and I'm following the practice uh, that, you know, I've been uh, a practicing physicist for about uh, 50 years now, and, uh, you know, I, I've written more than a thousand scientific papers. That's how science is done. Science is driven by curiosity, we, and, and it should be guided by collecting as much data as possible. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of scientists are trying to uh, pretend to be the adults in the room, to know the answer and be authoritative uh, from the point of view of an expert based on past knowledge. And uh, my point is that we should be humble uh, rather than pretend that we know the answer. We should not show off but uh, actually admit when something looks puzzling and try to figure it out by getting more data. You know, we should, uh, science is a privilege of maintaining your childhood curiosity. And anyone that claims otherwise is missing the point of science. And that's why I get a lot of attention from the public because the public resonates with that uh, approach. Uh, and uh, frankly, uh, it's the authentic approach of pursuing science. We sometimes make mistakes, we have the wrong ideas, but the only way for us to figure out the truth is by collecting data and not by having authority and suppressing the voice uh, of people who think differently than uh, uh, the mainstream uh, of, of uh, practitioners because the mainstream was wrong on many occasions in recent history. Just to, to give you one example in theoretical physics, there was a symmetry of nature called supersymmetry that was advocated for 40 years and everyone uh, uh, was publishing about it and quite confident about it. Nobody had an issue with that except that the Large Hadron Collider at CERN did not find it. And so what people call the mainstream is quite often wrong. Uh, there are ideas that are not correct, and the only way to find out is by experiments. And what I'm saying is we should allow multiple possibilities to be on the table. If this object shows anomalies, 3i Atlas should be considered as either natural or technological, depending on what the future data will show. So let's just collect as much data as possible and figure it out. Love, last but not the least, if history later proves your alien hypothesis right, do you think today's scientists will regret not taking your warning seriously? Well, frankly, I don't really care about them. I think that those that are uh, very critical will eventually say we thought about it all along and he doesn't deserve the credit for arguing that. Uh, and um, But I don't. it's not really about me or them. And, uh, you know, even if we end up finding conclusive evidence for a, a visit by a technological 
um, uh, entity uh, from another from outside the solar system uh, even if we find that and the Nobel Prize is uh, offered for that discovery you know I would not waste my time uh, wearing a tuxedo and going to Stockholm uh, uh, because uh, what really matters here is learning from our neighbors if they are more intelligent than we are if they are more accomplished than we are it should inspire us to explore space and uh, you know as uh, Oscar Wilde said imitation is the sincerest form of flattery we should imitate them because they seem to be more accomplished they arrived at our backyard before we arrived at their backyard and uh, you know instead what happens here on earth i read the news every day it's very uh, disappointing because we focus on uh, conflicts and on, on this planet that we inhabit there is much more real estate in interstellar space outside of the solar system and uh, you know the big picture is that we are missing the point we are not at the center of the universe uh, we don't play an important role uh, but we should be inspired to to explore it and learn more about it and um, you know in the long term our civilization will be remembered only if we leave this planet and go elsewhere and so that should be the lesson that we will learn from a visit. Uh, for now, I'm just suggesting let's observe the sky, collect as much data of all our interstellar visitors and check if any of them might be, you know, a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor because that would be very inspiring and uplifting for humanity. And it may bring us together because we are all in the same boat uh, here on Earth. Thank you, Lob. That was very nice talking to you. Uh, we wish you a very all the best. Uh, and I hope you do share the future updates and data with Sakshi Media uh, wherever uh, it is possible and whenever it is possible. Thanks for inviting me. I'll be glad to speak with you again when we have uh, more data in the coming months. Have a great day, Lob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.